I just don't know how you get in there. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about these properties. Okay. I think it's kind of obvious where the axis of symmetry is if you've graphed it um, and everything. This one actually falls on a whole number. Uh, we could calculate it. Okay, x equals negative b. Well, that would become positive 6 over 2 times a. Well, 2 times 1 half is 1. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 6. And I think it's also pretty clear that that occurs at 0. The y value is 0. So our vertex is 6, 0. Now, is this a maximum or a minimum? Minimum. Okay, and it's a minimum value. So our function starts by decreasing. Okay? It starts by decreasing. So um, it decreases first from negative infinity until we get to our vertex of 6. And then it's increasing from 6 to infinity. Our range, we hit a minimum, okay? We hit a minimum. So that's going to be the first number of our range. That minimum is 0. So we go from 0 to infinity. Our y values go from 0 to infinity. It says it hits a minimum, and it increases from there. It goes up from there. Okay, so our range is from 0 to infinity. And we would write that one in interval notation of this, 0 to infinity. Okay. Infinity always gets a parenthesis uh, because infinity is not an exact number. It's just a concept of the biggest number imaginable. So if you come up with the biggest number imaginable, you add one to it, and then you got another big number. Okay. So it always gets a parenthesis. All right, uh, let's talk about factoring this one because this one's a little weird um, because of that fraction in front. But you can factor out a fraction as a GCF. So let's factor out one half. So when we take that out of the one half x squared, obviously we're left with the x squared. But then the question is, well, what are we left with when we take it out of six? Here's where the idea of GCF factoring is really like division. All you have to do is, is divide. Negative 6 by 1 half. Now you put 1 half in parentheses. Then you give you negative 12. And that is the correct answer. Because if you multiply it back out, 1 half times 12 gives you 6. So then this is going to be 36 on the end. 1 half times 36 gives us 18. And then we can factor that trinomial. 6 times 6 gives us 36, and negative 6 plus negative 6 gives us negative 12. This is, uh, if you remember, you should have heard this term before, a perfect square trinomial. Where the last number is a perfect square which, by the way, I have a list of perfect squares up here beside the projector screen. The last number is a perfect square, and the number in, middle, in the middle is two times that, that number. Okay? Um, so anyways, that's how it factors. And you may have seen this written like this, 1 half times x minus 6 squared, because it's the exact same expression. Just throwing in a few factoring things while we're at it. Okay, so our x-intercepts, we set our factor equal to 0. Well, really, we only have one factor. It's written twice, but really, it, it's the same thing. So we're going to get the same answer, but it's 6. So our x-intercept is the same as our vertex. That's possible. And it's possible to only have one x-intercept. We had two last time. It's possible to have one. And if you'll recall, it's possible to have no x-intercepts as well, which is quadratic. Uh, our y-intercept, it's always the constant on the end, so our y-intercept would be 0. 
18. All right, so I'm going to do one more example with you. I'm going to do it completely with the calculator. I'm going to do it completely with the calculator because, unfortunately, not all these factor in are nice and pretty and, and all that stuff. So let's look at this example. f of x is equal to negative 3x squared minus 5x plus 4. Negative 3x squared minus 5x plus 4. So we're going to answer all the questions that we've been answering about this function using the calculator. I'm going to make sure everybody knows where to find everything. So your first step is always plug it in y equals and take a look at the graph. <clears throat> All right, so here's our graph. Is that a maximum or a minimum? It's a maximum. Have you noticed something about the ones that have a maximum? Something about their equation? the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, when the leading coefficient is negative, you're going to have a maximum. When the leading coefficient is positive, you're going to have a minimum. So we have a maximum. So let's find out what that vertex is. So we're going to press second trace, which is beside the graph button, and here's why I wanted to identify whether it was a maximum or minimum. You've got to pick. It doesn't give you a vertex option. It gives you a minimum or a maximum option. So you got to know which one it is. It's a maximum, so we're going to press enter for number four, and it asks you for the left bound. So you're going to move your cursor to the left side of that maximum point, okay? It calculates it a little bit faster if you stay close to it, but technically you could move it all the way over here. It's still on the left side of that maximum, okay? And then you press enter, and it asks for a right bound, so that means you want to move your cursor to the right side of the maximum. So this one I'm going to leave a little bit closer. It really doesn't matter. As long as the maximum is between those two little arrows after you press enter twice. And then it asks you for a guess. You can move your cursor. You really don't have to. Press enter, and it will give you the maximum. Uh, it gives you the x coordinates. Be careful that you notice that there are little negatives and stuff in there. So this is a Kind of a nasty little decimal. I like to round to three places after a decimal just to be accurate. And then my y is 6.083. Okay. Now, again, technically we can calculate that by hand. It would give us a nice, neat fraction, but technically there's nothing wrong with that unless I say calculate it by hand. All right. Our axis of symmetry, remember I said that the x coordinate is the same as the x of the vertex or vice versa. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 0.833. You've got to have the x equals. Okay, you have to have the x equals. Now, our x intercepts. Before we found those by factoring, well, this one, guess what, does not factor. So Using our calculator, we go back to second trace, our calculate menu, and we're going to go to the second option that says zero. Now, the reason why it says zero is because if you're on the x-axis, then your function, uh, the y value is zero, so your function equals zero, so that's why that is named that, okay? Um, so, it asks for left bound. Again, you want to go to the left side of the zero, press enter, right bound, you want to go to the right side, press enter again, you just want to make sure that that intercept falls between those two arrows. Uh, once you press enter twice, you don't have to move the cursor for the guess, you can just press zero. So one of our x-intercepts is negative 2.2570. Now hopefully you, I don't know if you can see if you're doing that on your calculator or if you can see it up here on mine, the calculator doesn't seem to have my value in zero but I'm sitting right on the x-axis. Uh, this is the calculator's way of doing scientific notation. See this E and the negative 12? Remember from your science classes, it's like 10 to the negative 12? Well, negatives move us, move the decimal to the left, so there are 11 zeros in front of that one. Uh, that's its associated zero, okay? If you see that E with a big negative number after it, it really is zero. It's just the calculator, the way it approximates things, for whatever reason, makes so that it's zero right there. Okay? 
Uh, but there are two, so we need to go with the other one. This time the left bound is above the x-axis, the right bound is below. This time it told us that the y value is zero, so go figure. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. This one is 0 0.5910. Now, the y-intercept, we really don't need the calculator for that. It's always the constant on the end. So the y-intercept is 0, 4. The domain is all real numbers. And the range, it hits a maximum, so it's from negative infinity to the uh, y value of the vertex, 6.083.